in the previous unit we digitized the center line in this unit we will begin by digitizing the bank lines so you will see the next feature that you have in reverse section is the bank lines after junction so you can check the bank lines and you will see that it has a symbology of this red color now there are no specific criteria on how we want to digitize bank lines so bank lines are basically used to define what section of the river is the main river and everything outside the bank line will be the floodplain and in Haycrest this is usually used for assigning Manning's N so usually the Manning's N is lower in the main channel because there is less resistance and in floodplain because we have vegetation and other things that will obstruct the flow it will have higher Manning's N so usually if you have a good terrain you will see the bank lines or at least the boundary where you will see the the distinction between the floodplain and the main channel so in this case you can see this is our main channel and then this is the floodplain here and this is the floodplain here so we are going to use this smooth green color that you see here as our main channel and then we are going to digitize bank lines to differentiate that main channel from floodplain now when we digitize center line we use certain criteria such as always starting from upstream and going downstream and similarly when we come to the junction we want to make sure that all the center line endpoints meet at the junction in case of bank lines there are no criteria so you can start upstream or downstream you don't have to stop at junction at least on the outer side here because when you look at the junction you really don't have to stop you can keep going similarly when you come here again you don't have to stop you can digitize here and keep moving in this direction similarly when you start your bank for typical you can come to the junction and just move along the bank for the lower reach so this is how we will do for our banks so i will start again with upper wabash reach looking downstream i will start with the left bank so to start digitizing or create these bank lines you will again right click on bank line and select edit geometry and then start digitizing like this so again this does not have to be super perfect in terms of matching the the bank that you see here and again when you want to zoom out you can use the scroll button and if you want to pan you can push the scroll button and pan like this and keep digitizing until you reach the end so I will zoom out a little bit to make it easier so I don't have to pan many times so you can see I'm using the same boundary go all the way down to the lower reach so I'll keep digitizing until I reach the end of this and once you reach the end you just double click to stop editing and then this is my bank line left bank line that covers the entire Wabash River so if I'm happy with this I can save my edits so I will go to bank lines right click stop editing and yes to save edits after I'm done with the left bank I will start with the right bank so I'll zoom in a little bit 
and then again right click on bank line edit geometry we are creating a 1d hackrass model so you just want to make sure that you have your features where we are going to have our cross section so, so the feature meaning the bank line center line and the flow path which we are going to do next so once i come here at the end i will double click and stop digitizing so again you can see i started here I continued, I moved all the way up the tributary and finished here at the Tipicano left bank. So after that, I will start here. So once we are done with this, let's save this line. So right click on bank line, stop editing, save edits, yes and then again begin editing so let's pan before we do that so so start editing again now you can see there is a island here if you want you can use this as your entire bank or you can use this only single reach so I'm just going to go through the middle here so let's pan Keep digitizing until you reach the end and for some reason if you want to stop in the middle it's fine and you can just digitize another line so with respect to banks it doesn't really matter whether you have a continuous line or not as I mentioned earlier as long as a cross section that we are going to create later connects with your bank line center line and flow path it doesn't matter as far as bank lines are concerned so in this case we created only three lines to define the bank one was this the next one was this and there is one more line that is associated with the upper wabash reach and the typical new tributary so once i'm done with digitizing this line i'm going to save my edits so right click on bank lines stop editing and yes so let's zoom out to see how our banks look so earlier we had the blue center line now we have the red bank line and if you want you can open the attribute table of bank lines by right clicking and open attribute table and you will see that there are basically no attributes to bank lines other than the length and the number of vertices we created for this polyline so unlike for center line where you had reach name river name uh, information about junction so all that is not needed all we have to do is make sure that we have a line that will distinguish between the main channel and floodplain so this is how you digitize your bank line and in the next unit we will see how we can digitize flow paths. So for now go ahead and save your project. So file save and this is it for this unit.